Imagine not knowing that you have a potentially life-threatening illness until 20 years after getting infected. This is not an unknown mystery illness. It is actually one that has been around for centuries. Once known as leprosy, but now commonly referred to as Hansen's disease, the allure of this disease has transcended the times. Currently, Hansen's disease still has a large impact on the life of many around the world. In 2019, it was reported that 40 children a day get diagnosed with the disease, and 2 to 3 million people are living with Hansen's disease-related disabilities globally. Through this video, you will learn about the disease, symptoms to identify infection, transmission, and modern treatments. To start, Hansen's disease is an infection caused by a specific kind of bacteria called Mycobacterium leprae. While some bacteria multiply rapidly, like the milk you left out of the fridge for far too long, the bacteria causing Mycobacterium leprae grows very slowly. For this reason, it may take up to 20 years to develop signs of infection. Microbacterium leprae attacks the nerves of the body, causing symptoms such as loss of touch and the ability to sense pain. Because of this, people with Hansen's disease are prone to injuries like cuts and burns, since their nerves may no longer sense dangerous temperatures or surfaces. While cases of the disease are recorded to exist even before the Common Era, this slowly growing bacteria was discovered in 1873 by Gerhard Hansen, and the disease was once known as leprosy and now renamed to Hansen's disease. Historically, Hansen's disease was feared as highly contagious and people who were infected were often ostracized and isolated from their communities. Nowadays, there continues to be stigma surrounding the disease. According to the World Health Organization, there were 200,000 new cases registered in 2019, and of those cases, 1 in 20 led to serious disabilities. However, through education, there is hope to raise awareness and reduce stigma of this disease, and and provide timely treatment to avoid disabilities caused by Hansen's disease. With some of the basic facts about Hansen's disease covered, we can now focus on more specific aspects of the illnesses, such as symptoms and diagnosis. In its initial stage, Hansen's disease only affects one's skin and or mucous membrane. This can usually be identified by bumps in the skin, skin discoloration, or acute skin dryness in the form of flakiness. These are usually considered mild symptoms and do not affect the patient's day-to-day -day activities. However, in severe cases, Hansen's disease can affect the eyes, causing partial or complete blindness and even the nerves in the central nervous system can be affected. This can result in the numbness or loss of sensation in some areas of the body as well as muscle paralysis, usually in the hands or feet. Sometimes there's also visible enlargements of nerves near the elbow, knees, and neck, with redness and pain in surrounding areas. In the most extreme cases of Hansen's disease, patients may suffer from shortening of fingers and toes and the deformation of their nose due to nerve damage and reabsorption. Individuals with Hansen disease also face mental health struggles because, as mentioned previously, they are often isolated from their communities. Fortunately, the disease can be diagnosed in its earlier stages by recognizing the appearance of the patient's skin. As previously mentioned, the patches on one's skin along with the discoloration and change in skin texture can help doctors identify the basic characteristics of the illness. The physical examination can be further coupled with a skin biopsy in order to confirm the results. If the cause of the skin condition is identified as Hansen's disease, then the doctors can immediately proceed with treatment options to prevent the conditioning from worsening. So how can one potentially get Hansen's disease? Well, scientists think that the Mycobacterium leprae can get transmitted when an infected individual coughs and sneezes and a healthy person breathes in those droplets containing the bacteria. Microbacterium leprae then enters the body mainly through the mouth or nasal passages. The bacteria then infects what are known as Schwann cells, which are special nerve cells that help create a protective barrier called myelin. Myelin surrounds a neuron's axon, which is the place on the nerve that carries electrical impulses that eventually allows the nervous system to carry out its functions. It is thought that Microbacterium leprae destroys myelin because it attacks the mitochondria of the swan cells. Without myelin, the nervous system is unable to function properly. 
Over time, the nervous system's response to the bacteria has also shown to actually further damage the axon, which scientists believe is the cause for the loss of feeling in skin that individuals with Hansen's disease may experience. More research needs to be conducted to confirm the transmission pathway, however. The good news is, if Hansen's disease is diagnosed early, you can prevent long-term impacts of the disease because of the available treatment options. Usually, Hansen's disease is treated with a combination of 2-3 to three antibiotics. According to the Center of Disease Control, the most notable ones are called Dapsome, Rifampicin, and Clovazamine. The aim of using multiple antibiotics at once is to prevent the bacteria from becoming resistant after repeated use for long periods of time, as the treatment is used for between one to two years. It is important to note that the treatment options are unable to reverse any of the serious impacts that may be caused by Hansen's disease. This is why early detection is vital in helping to prevent long-term impacts. To recap, Hansen's disease, previously known as leprosy, is an infection of slow-growing microbacterium leprae. The disease can impact the skin, causing an array of issues, but most notably discoloration and dryness. The nervous system can be impacted because of the damage to Schwann cells, leading to possible numbness, muscle weakness, and eye problems. If left untreated for a long period of time, extreme symptoms such as shortening of toes and fingers as well as nose disconfiguration can occur. It is known that Hansen's disease is mainly prevalent in resource-limited countries. Individuals in developing countries often can't afford the associated cost of getting the antibiotic treatment. Also, because of the continued stigma against people with Hansen's disease, individuals do not seek help when symptoms first appear, leading to an escalation of disabilities. In fact, some countries have laws that permit a person to divorce a spouse specifically because they have Hansen's disease. Disease. Often this impacts women the most, leading to the issue of homelessness among others. However, the upside is that Hansen's disease can be treated and in many cases cured. With the help of the global community, becoming more informed and impassioned about the issue will hopefully decrease the stigma and Hansen's disease can be one for the history books.